Welcome back, boys and girls. This is our third week of distance learning, and I sure do miss all of you. We are doing part three of our Pablo Picasso portrait, and as you can see, I've already outlined my work. I'm going to add just a few more lines around the portrait, just more balanced. I am going to be referencing the color wheel. We've spoken a lot about that in class. Remember, the color wheel is always in the same order, just like the rainbow, Roy G. Biv. And I like neutral colors and cool colors. You can use whatever you want to color your portrait with. This is what I had. I'm trying to keep it very simple. I don't know what materials you have at home, but you can use anything you like. So if you have crayons like I'm using, or if you have markers, watercolor, paint, Whatever you have works, and if you don't have anything to color with, you can definitely just use pencil and shade and show value. So one of the things I'm going to do here is I absolutely love this background of this painting that Pablo Picasso did, how it goes from this bright yellow to this lime green. So I think I'm going to do that first along the side of the face. And as I continue to work, I'm going to get inspiration from Pablo Picasso's beautiful paintings. You can color yours however you like. You know that I love to see you blending colors and I love to see you showing value. We've talked a lot about value in class. Do you remember what value is? I'm gonna give you a few seconds to think about it. I have it pasted up right next to my Promethean board and we talk about it a lot and we've done value scales. So you can see I showed a value here. Value is the lightness or darkness of a color. So I went from light to medium to dark and I'm going to do that throughout my artwork. So you can see again with this purple I'm going to do dark, medium, and then light. And I think I'm going to decide to do the hair in all cool colors. You can do it whichever way you like, but I kind of really enjoy separating my painting into different color families. So the hair will be done in cool colors as well as showing value. Value is very important. It will really take your art to looking fabulous. It really makes a big difference when you are coloring. Another thing you want to remember to do is to try and color in the same direction, especially when you're using crayons or when you're using colored pencils and when you're showing value, so that the direction of the line is always going in the same direction. And it's not always going to be dark, medium, and light. Some areas I might choose to do all dark, some areas I might choose to do all medium, and some areas I might choose to do all light. Again, I want you to feel creative and do whatever makes you happy, whatever you are comfortable with, and use whatever materials you have. So again, all I had was some crayons that I took from my teenage boys, and that's what I'm going to be working with. So again, feel free to use whatever you have on hand. So I'm almost done with the hair. I did the hair in cool colors. Now let's see, I'm going to choose some warm colors to work with for a little bit. I'm going to do the eyebrow in a dark value. And maybe pop some of the same color over here down on the lips. I like to choose one color and kind of just move around my artwork and pop around and use it throughout. I think it creates balance in your composition. Remember, composition is the way an artist lays out or places their lines and shapes on a paper. Work to show balance and again showing value. I really hope you're enjoying your time at home with your families and you're staying safe, you're staying healthy, you're staying home, and more than anything else, you're staying positive. Make sure when you do send me your artwork, I've been getting tons of artwork through email and it just makes me so happy. It makes my day. Please remember when you send it to please add your first and last name and your homeroom teacher's name. Remember, I have more than 430 students, 
some of you have the same beautiful name as somebody else, so adding the homeroom teacher's name really does help. I love it when you take a picture of yourself holding the artwork. It is the cutest thing ever. That really makes my day. And make sure if you do do that, I want to see a really big smile on your face. So you can see here I'm doing kind of the same thing I did over here on this side where I was inspired by Picasso's background here. Over here I went from that lime green to the yellow. Over here I'm going from the oranges to the pinks. I really love how that color starts to change and kind of blend into one another. It's fun and different. This is going to be definitely a very colorful artwork. However, you can choose, like Pablo Picasso did when he only used cool colors, you can make your whole portrait in just cool colors. Maybe you can make your whole portrait like his rose period in all warm colors, or like his African period where he used mostly the neutral colors. Again, whatever makes you happy and brings you joy. That's what I want you to do. Again, I'm showing value, I'm going from dark to medium to light, and then mixing and blending in some other colors throughout. Now it's time to work on the nose. Got a funny little nose, huh? <laughs> Not sure if this is a boy or a girl. I'm sure most of you would say it's a girl because you see eyelashes, but don't forget you boys have eyelashes too. the neutral colors but decided not to. I'm going to stick to just cool and warm colors. I get asked a lot what my favorite color is and it's such a hard question for an art teacher. I love all the colors. Cool colors I think gives me a sense of calmness where the warm colors I feel like gives me energy. 